Thanks for joining us on Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the day's papers and make sense of it. And joining us to analyze the papers today is uh, David Belele, uh, joining us live from Zoom, from Ondo State. Thanks for joining us, sir. Yes, thank you very much, uh, madam. Uh, it, it's my pleasure joining uh, your uh, morning uh, press of uh, uh, media engagement and it's nice to have me on the show. Fantastic. Next up, we have Ihe uh, joining us from Lagos. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Lagos. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So we're starting first with the Punch newspaper. And we see here that the headline on the Punch says, Public Property Recovery. Malami revives controversial panel dissolved by Hubuhari. Public property recovery. Malami revives controversial panel dissolved by Buhari. And uh, we see here as well appoints ex CJN's Onoen's accuser as panel lead uh, consultant. And SPIP begins verification of Abuja houses threatens <coughs> occupiers. Also, we see here NDDC failed to utilize. 5 trillion naira for Niger Delta development, and that's a claim by Akpabu. Akpabu here is saying NDDC failed to use 5 trillion naira for Niger Delta development. And the US is uh, giving an explainer here on the punch saying uh, why we're helping to rehabilitate repentant Boko Haram terrorist. And uh, we see as well $1 million fee were ready to return home over harassment in Ghana, says Nigerian traders. Uh, also, on the front page of the punch as well, the top part of the punch, we see a story here still about the Malami issue, saying Malami kicks as Salami panel recommends sacking. Malami kicks as Salami panel recommend sacking. As well as the issue in Southern Kaduna at the moment, Catholic bishops to Elrofi, Southern Kaduna people feel abandoned. So that's the Catholic bishops telling Elrofi that the people of Southern Kaduna feel abandoned. We also see here this controversial issue of the Unilag crisis. Federal government asked Babalaki Ogundipe to step aside, appoint a visitation panel. Throwing it out to you, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Ihechuku, what's your thoughts on the headlines uh, on the Punch newspaper today? Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you very much. Um, I'll take as uh, I'll, take, I'll just start off with the with the Unilag crisis because um, I mean it's a, it's a major issue right now that is uh, taking the front burner and it's attracting all, all sorts of attention, um, taking away from the from the key issues that we are facing as a nation. I'm very happy with the stand that the federal government has taken for both parties to step up um, and for them to establish a visitation panel that will look into uh, the, 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 the core issues and, of course, uh, discuss with the key parties that are involved. Uh, because what it is now is um, what we have are two factions, and that is not um, it's not a very good one at this point in time. So I'm happy that for at least the federal government has gone ahead to take a very decisive uh, step by asking both uh, the chairman of the government council and the former VC, the, the, the VC uh, who's been the storm of the crisis to step aside why they establish a visitation panel that will take a uh, look at the issue. So for me, that's a good move by the federal government. Then I'll look at the NDDC issue where the, um, the current minister uh, for the Niger Delta is, uh, is, uh, is stating about, um, is saying about the, um, Five trillion has not been applied by NDDC. I think that for us, um, that is over, since this group started. That's a key point that is that we, that's very very clear. Anyways, um, on the on, on the flip side, I would expect that um, every party who has been involved, both um, um, the current IM, the interim management board that has been created, and then um, all the parties who are involved um, so far, we don't have. I don't think they, they have any real rights to speak about what level of um, um, infrastructure development that the NDCC has brought so far. And why I say that is because as long as you were, in, you were part of the team and you were not able to sort out whatever problems, um, and in fact, you became part of the pro panel to the extent that I, I think uh, sometime this week, the EFCC have also invited um, the current um, NDCMD and um, some key parties to appear before it. 
I don't think that they have the right to speak about what level of activities that the NDC has um, um, has uh, had or what impact they've had in Niger Delta. I think it's a lost, lost chance for, for the Niger Delta people. Um, I, I'm not saying that it's, it cannot be salvaged. So I think that the same way that the federal government has taken decisive action with the UNILAC issue, they need to take a very decisive action with the NDC issue. All key parties who are currently um, involved in it, stating, talking, you know, they need to just make sure that they take all of those key parties out and start with a fresh uh, team that needs to look into the cause and effect. And I would like to see real punishment, real sanctions, according to the law, um, taken um, for, for anybody who's found company. Because what we're talking about is a huge amount of money is here involved. Um, being banded left, right, center, five trillion, it's one billion. This is a mild, mild watering amount of money that mm. we're meant to, to um, improve the lives uh, of the people and they've not um, they, they achieved so far. I want to take a look also at the um, the issue of the South South uh, Kaduna um, agitation. Uh, to be quite frank with you, I think it's a feeling that comes from um, we have not been protected. Um, every time we, 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 we complain, I think it's basically the same thing. It, then again, it still boils down to the same thing. And government and leadership. Uh, to be quite frank with you, um, this has been I mean, a bit of my existence as a nation, um, where every time we have we fought, we 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 given our leaders the opportunity to take care of us or to to take certain decisions on behalf of the people, and we don't get um, satisfactory um, you know leadership that we we desire. So I think our complaints is straightforward. People are being killed. Um, claims of um, bandits ambushing them at night, the claims of all sorts of um, uh, heinous uh, killings and crimes going on there. And they don't think that they're being well protected. They don't think that they're well taken care of. Once again, it requires some very serious process before it's to go um, into, into uh, something more serious than we already have in our hands. Mm. Um, we'll yeah, we'll uh, the me the Malami issue, I, I think also that he, he is um, mm. trying to act in his capacity as um, the Attorney General of the Federation. Um, we have not looked properly into the committee, the team that he is, is, is um, resurrecting, but it's just that um, over the past two or three weeks, a lot of mm. issues have been, fly, have been flown over, over his head as a minister, and now we have thought that um, this is one area that you have um, not looked into for now. Why trying to sort out the other ones that are currently, the other issues that are currently um, bedeviling um, um, in his office? Um, but that I think it falls right within his purview to go ahead and, you know, um, do whatever it is, get committee, um, do whatever uh, uh, panel that he, he feels necessary to take care of whatever issues are fall to his um, table. The Magu, the Magu issue. Okay, now, the Magu minute, issue before, is before becoming you go, Before a you real, delve into that, yeah. Ihechiku, I'd like to bring in our next uh, guest, uh, uh, David, here to, to, to help us analyze uh, uh, the issues of, of interest to him. Uh, so, David, which of the stories of the punch have uh, caught your attention this morning? Yeah, thank you very much, Madam. I, I want to acknowledge the fact that the story behind the, the, the sack of the Minilag of VC it's, it's quite impressive on the on the fact that he was alleged uh, he's approved uh, he's managing the fund meant for the investing authority on, on the basic that uh, the, the the senate committee had a unanimous decision after that meeting got him sacked and to me and i believe it's a welcoming idea on the basic that um, it's uh, it's one of the things our president has been preaching against Corruption of the mapped out. And I believe that um, what really happened in Unilag is not as if it has not been happening in other uh, institutions. And this occurrence of the same similar issue must be checked in other universities to ensure that um, sanctity and also um, transparency is, is preached across our tertiary institutions. And I believe that what is happening in, the, in, in, in Unilag is not. There was not just happened today, it has been happening in other parts of, um, uh, in other places, in other parts of this uh, different uh, uh, institutions. And I believe uh, Mr. President has acted well. 
are telling the acting of uh, this is to step aside for a new one to be appointed. And uh, the issue of um, Malamin um, revived controversial panel dissolved by Buhari, I am not a lawyer, but the only thing I can say about this whole thing is that when the, the grass, uh, we went to elephant fight, the grass will definitely suffer for it. In law, they know what to do and they know where to run to turn their, 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 their fight to, as a matter of fact, it is, it, is, it is not something that we must say as public analysts that this is the right direction, this is where to go, curbing these anomalies that has been in the country. But in as much as we are concerned in this country, things like this have been happening and um, issues like this are Can you hear me, David? All right. While well, we try to get you back on the air, let's uh, turn now to the Nation newspaper. Uh, the headline here is about the elections coming up in Edo and Ondo State. The Nation slams it here, saying on ease at INEC as Supreme Court rules on 22-party suit. On ease at INEC as Supreme Court rules on 22-party suit. Commission in dilemma over status of the registered parties. And that's on page three, a very big issue as a matter of fact. We'll also see here the Unilac crisis on page 29 of The Nation. Uh, having the story, Buhari suspending Babalaki and Ogundipe sets up visitation panel or disappointment of new acting VC. We also see the story on the Ondo 2020 polls here saying Akere Dolu Jegede Ajayi makes INEX final list right there on page three of the Nation newspaper. Also an entertainment story uh, that I don't think uh, our analysts might want to talk about. So going back to you now, uh, uh, David, if we have you here, which of these stories would you like to uh, uh, to touch on on, uh, on on the Nation this morning? I'm part of this. Hey, yes, thank you very much. Actually, I want to talk uh, briefly about the Ondo State election that is coming up um, uh, uh, October 10. And as I speak to you right now, I'm in Ondo State and uh, the, the atmosphere as regards Ondo 2020 is concerned, the atmosphere is peaceful. On the name that uh, so many are saying that the governor must not be re-elected. So people are saying that uh, he has done well to deserve second uh, term in office. As a matter of fact, you know, um, politicians, um, um, leaders of respective parties that are joining us together to ensure that um, the governor is given the lead to, to become the, the governor and also to, uh, to re-equal the, 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 the record of the past uh, governor, who is a person of uh, good, um, Mimico, on the, on the fact that he was the only governor in the history of Ono State who had been re-elected for the second time in office. And the governor is, is trying to do that. Be as it may be, you could also agree with me that uh, the governor in person, when um, he had Zoom office, he promised the people of those states on the premises that uh, education is one of the, the key agenda that they want to they want to they want to fight to ensure that people have the right to go to school. No citizen of those states should be dropped out. When he came on board after some some years, to find out that the tuition fees in state owned tertiary institutions and primary schools are not controlled by those states. And their, their tuition fees were highly skyrocketed. So these are things that people are holding against him, not because of the fact that they, they do not like him. His policy and things that he has brought in place to move on those states forward has not been in favor of the people. And people are saying that he will not be related. But we don't know what um, the, the leadership of the party from Abuja and other parts will do to ensure that he gets related. As, as we speak right now, the race. As long as Ondo State is concerned, the governor is shaking, and his deputy, the person of uh, Honorable Agola Jayi, is pulling ground with the help of the former governor of the state to ensure that the governor does not come back to sit in a Lagbakal uh, government house. And these are things that are happening in Ondo State. These are first class information that I'm giving to you, madam. So if anybody is telling you that the governor is still popular in Ondo State, it is, it is, it, it is a lie. Um, the governor is losing his ground every day by day. We have it everywhere, propaganda that the governor is buying people, is giving people money to get for uh, uh, support from his party members, those who contested against him, 
And those things, those allegations are there. So, but we want to believe that um, in an election like this, whereby a governor is seeking for relation, what should be able to uh, define his second time relation is performance. Understand the point? This governor has not performed. He does not deserve the vote of the people. And as it is right now, the governor is everywhere trying to reconcile his party members to get their support so that he will be reelected. So on the issues of um, INEC um, uh, uh, court rules on 22 party suits, I am not a lawyer. I have not read that uh, article before, and I don't have the jury rights to comment on that because this is a public uh, 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 TV that is uh, that is viewed, that is watched by millions of people across the world. I wouldn't want to give something that is in line with what I've not I've not read online or probably on paper. All right, David. That is what thing that is happening in those, as it is right now. Thank All you very right, much, David. madam. Thank you, David. I'll be coming back to you in just a moment as well as uh, uh, Ihechiku, uh, just after uh, taking a look at these headlines on The Guardian newspaper. The big story here on page two of The Guardian says, Unilag Buhari suspends Babalaki Ogundipe. Sachs acting VC. That story is big across all the national dailies uh, this morning. We also see here uh, the story of the COVID-19 lockdown says film industry faces collapse as experts approximate 50 billion naira loss. And we see this is coming uh, just at the back of campaigns uh, for hashtag save our cinemas. So the story again, film industry faces collapse as experts approximate a loss of 50 billion naira. We also see the story here on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, serial killer, monarchs go spiritual, dispatch hunters. And we're seeing a spiritual dimension there to tackle the issue of serial killers uh, uh, right there. News of impending flood sends jitters across Ogun. Lagos communities. I would hate to see the stories make headlines uh, across our national dailies, but here it is on page two, news of impending flood sends jitters across Lagos Ogun communities. We also see here on uh, the cover page of The Guardian, why poor safety protocols enforcement they hinder fight against COVID-19. So throwing it back to you now, Ihechiko, which of the stories would you like to touch, uh, shine a light on today? Um, I think that the impending flood um, story for me is very key because um, I mean when when um, when the rain starts when the flood comes, you there by the government the silting of um, the silting of of, of gutters, drainages, um, um, opening up of of the super highways that where waters pass through. Um, of course, making sure that water moves quickly through the gutters and the and the and the, sea, and the seaways is very very crucial. So for me, I think it's a story that aside whatever aside whatever um, headlines that is bringing out is also coming out as a as a, as an advance warning to the government and the people to prepare for whatever. Um, uh, whatever flood, flood prone um, season that we're going to face, we um, have to start on how to devise things to, to ensure that we're not hit. Um, taking from the prediction that there may be heavy rain later this month and September, um, um, both the people in Lagos need to begin, the communities need to begin to prepare at this time to clear up their, their drainages. And to ensure that um, there does not fall, does not um, block areas where the waters will pass. Um, I think that's basically what um, it is for me. I think it's a very very important story. Um, maybe it may have been given on the banner headline, but I think it's very crucial for us all to uh, get um, get that in, in the system. Of course, the government has a huge role to play too because the the distilling of, of the waterways is very crucial. I cannot remember the last time I saw in my area where that distilling has has happened, um, I think that they need to do it because they, they, the government used to do it previously, but this is a wake-up call before it hits um, the community. Thank you very much. Hmm. Okay, let, let's just uh, go a bit back now to the nation. The lower part of, of that, uh, quite big story, some big stories here. Uh, this one says, uh, expect massive defections to APC 
Boni vows. Expect massive diversions, uh, defections to uh, APC Boni vows. And uh, we also see how 13 billion naira for community policing will be spent and that uh, the Inspector General of Police and the Autumn also advocating for Nigerians to be allowed to carry AK-47 rifles. I don't know what you think about this uh, in, in just a moment when I'll be coming to you, uh, analysts here, but Autumn is saying allow Nigerians carry AK-47 rifles and that's in the spirit of community uh, uh, policing for which a 13 billion naira has already be, been budgeted. We also see the sports story here, Sevilla wins six Europe cup and the picture here of uh, the players celebrating and holding uh, their trophy. We also see here controversy rages over MBA's Aerofy snob. This story has been making headlines ever since uh, it was announced. Uh, the, uh, we also see here Bauchi Jigawa branches threaten to boycott the conference and this is over the Southern Kaduna killings and Aerofy uh, invitation has been withdrawn. We also see here no ethnic religious consideration in withdrawal of invitation. Now we also see uh, a, a response to that. Usoro here saying no ethnic religious consideration in withdrawal of invitation. We also see here Ku Jonathan leads West African leaders to Mali as well as the WHO here saying COVID-19 to end within two years. Lots of stories uh, to be dissected here on Off The Press. So uh, throwing it back to you now, Ihechuku, which of the stories would you like to, uh, to talk about this morning? Um, in fact, I think I also saw this um, 13 billion, uh, I mean, the, uh, president, the, the president, President Mohamed Mubari just um, has uh, he approved 13 billion uh, for, for takeoff of community policing in the country. And you know, this is one story that people would overlook, but it's so important um, because uh, community, community policing is something that has been happening in, in bits and pieces over, over a period of time. But it's something that um, we've always talked about, I mean, getting community policing. So the ordinary effort that we do as people in the different estates we live in is more or less a bit of that. Yeah, but of course, this time around, it's now come directly into the hands of um, the police the way it should be. Uh, it's something that we appreciate for the support security, and it's a very laudable move. Uh, even though I think that I'm hoping that with time the federal government will probably increase the funding. But most importantly, is and this is where I'm, I'm taking a lot of attention. Most importantly for me is the fact that the police inspector general has come out on the areas that this funding is going to go into training, sensitization, and purchase of equipment. Um, I mean, hey, um, it's good, it's a good move, but I also want the situation whereby this 13 billion that has been, that has been um, released by the president and the way it's spent and the way it's been groups and neighborhood board groups, vigilante groups are going to come up to use the community policy program uh, to, 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 to do illegal stuff. I'm, I'm looking at ways that it can be strictly monitored. Like every other thing in this nation, um, a lot of times we see that um, funds are released and policies are made, but at the end of the day, um, one or two things happen and they are found out. But I really hope that want to ensure that the funds are properly used and that it doesn't, um, as the police general has stated, it doesn't and lead into something on tour. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ihechuku, and thank you, David, as well, for joining us uh, to analyze these issues on Nigeria's uh, dailies today. Thank you very much for having me, as you as usual. Thank you. All right. So it's a wrap here on Off the Press and The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.